I'm talking about the moment of inertia tensor. And we got a lot of stuff to do, and I'm going to redo what I did in the last video, but to do it a different way. Okay, so here's what we have. I have these three masses, uh, A, B, and C. It doesn't really matter what their mass is and where they are, but they're, they're in, a, in a situation. And then I found the center mass. And then I found the moment of inertia tensor for these points about that center mass. That's kind of a big deal because then I can write this equation. The angular momentum is the moment of inertia multiplied by, or operated on, that's a tensor, the angular velocity vector. That's what I did. And there's my moment of inertia tensor. I wrote it down, and I'm not sure even why. Let me switch back over to my Python code, uh, show you two programs, and then I'll show you another way to find these principal moments of uh, axis, principal axis of inertia. So here we have uh, program number one. And I, already, and I put a link to this. I'll link it again down below. Uh, no big deal. So here are my three masses. I calculated the moment of inertia tensor. And then this cyan vector is my angular velocity vector. So the whole thing's rotating like this. And I'm going to rotate it, don't worry, in another video. In that case, my angular momentum vector is that way. So they're not in the same direction. And we want to find the three values, the three directions, it could be either way, back or forth, in which the angular velocity vector and the angular momentum are in the same direction. Now, the last time I did it this way, let me run this program because it's kind of cool. So what I did was I basically rotated the angular velocity vector until I got them in the same direction, and then I put a vector there, and then I put two more because I didn't do that. But those those are the uh, three directions, right, in, this, in the magenta color, in which the angular momentum and the angular velocity are in the same direction, and that is called the principal axis of inertia. Those are the three axes through which the angular momentum and the angular velocity are in the same direction. Now, there's another way to find it. Of course, you don't have to do this in Python and rotate vectors, although it's cool. There's another way. And so the real way to do it is with the eigenvalue problem. I'm going to show you that, which is really hard. OK, back to paper. So here is the equation that I want to deal with. L is I omega. And I want to find cases where I omega which would be L, is equal to some direction of omega. It doesn't have to be the same value. So we say it's equal to lambda omega. So this, is an, this equation is really important. This is the eigenvalue equation. And it really bothered me because I was like, well, isn't I lambda? Doesn't it make sense? And no, it's not because, look, this is a 3 by 3. Technically, it's a tensor, but you can treat it like a matrix. And this is a scalar value. So what we're trying to do is to find what uh, angular velocities, when I operate this moment of inertia on it, gives back the same direction. That's what we're trying to do. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is to uh, use the identity matrix. I'm going to write this as 1 with an arrow over it, because I don't want to use i, because I have i already. right? That's, so this is the matrix. Uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. If I multiply this by omega, if I operate that on omega, I'm going to get omega back, right? So it will just give me the x component, then the y component, the z component, so that's the same thing. Well, that means that I can write this as i omega equals lambda times the identity operator times omega. Now I can subtract this from both sides. And remember, this is a vector. When I operate those together, this is a vector. that's a vector. So if I subtract this from both sides, I should have a vector. So I'm going to get i omega minus lambda 1 omega equals 0 vector. And remember, 0 vector is 0, 0, 0. It's not the same thing as 0, just to make sure. A lot of people put to 0. It's not 0. But anyway, I can factor out the omega, and I get i minus lambda identity operated on omega is equal to 0. And it turns out that the only way I can take a matrix, this, this is a matrix, right? Because it's a matrix and a 3 by 3 and a 3 by 3. I can multiply it by a scalar. The only way I can do that is if this, the determinant of this is 0. So let's write out that first. I uh, I'm going to write it out the full way. I minus lambda 1 
is the matrix uh, i x x minus lambda i x y i x z i y x that's a y i y y minus lambda i y z i z x i z y i z z minus lambda and that's my matrix and I want to take the determinant of that and set it equal to zero and maybe you've done some matrix operations before and you could say oh boy that's gonna be fun okay and we're, I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna bail because I don't want to do that I don't want to do it okay so this is my my matrix right here let's find so what we'll do is when we when we take the determinant of this and set it equal to zero, we can solve for values of lambda that make that true. And then we can put those values of lambda, lambda back in and back into uh, this equation, this equation, no, this, no, this equation right here, I got it, that one, and solve for the value of omega. So we're gonna get two things. The, the values of lambda we call lambda, those are the eigenvalues. And then omega is going to be the eigenvectors. And what in any kind of problems that you get like this, eigenvectors. These are the set of vectors for which i omega is in the same direction as omega. Remember, that's what we're trying to do, and we should get three of them. Okay, I'm going to write let's write this matrix right here and set up this problem. You can see how hard it's going to be. I'm going to say i, I'm going to call that the value a, because I don't really care what the number is. A, B, 0. And then that's the same as that, so that's B. That's a new number C, 0, 0, 0, and then a new number D. So I have, I have that. And I want to take the determinant of I minus lambda 1. So that's going to be equal to the determinant of A minus lambda B, 0, B, C minus lambda, 0, 0, 0, D minus lambda. So how do we take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix? Well, we use 2 by 2 matrices, which I know is kind of dumb, but we do this for cross product anyway. So we're going to we're going to take this value right here and expand about that row and then take the determinant of that. So this is going to be equal to, I'm going to write it out as uh, A minus lambda and then take the determinant of this. So it's going to be this times this, which is C minus lambda times D minus lambda minus 0 times 0. Now I'm going to expand about this row. Now this one, since it's the first row, the second column has a negative sign in front of it. Uh, so that's going to be negative that value B. And then I need to say B times this. So B times D minus lambda and then 0 times 0. And finally, I'm going to expand about that one, which is 0. So that's actually pretty nice, because 0 times that stuff plus 0 times that stuff is equal to 0. That's good. OK, so let's just kind of um, do some stuff here. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you notice here that I'm going to get a lambda, 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 tri lamb, uh, and then I'm going to get a lambda squared, I'm gonna need a lambda term. So it's gonna be, let's just say, uh, let's call this k1 lambda squared plus k, no, cubed, plus k2 lambda squared plus k3 lambda plus k4 equals zero. That's essentially the equation that we have to solve. And you know, you, you could, maybe you get lucky Maybe you can factor it. But look at the numbers I had right there. I picked some values. They're probably not going to factor that. I mean, that's actually twice that. So maybe there's some chance there. But uh, it's just rare. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. OK? So once we do that, I would find three lambdas. Lambda 1 equals something. Lambda 2 equals something. Lambda 3 equals something. And then I can put it back in, like I said, this equation right here. And then I take the determinant of that, or no, I do the operation to find the, the value. So it would be um, a minus lambda 1, b, 0, b, 
C minus lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, D minus lambda 1, operated on omega 1, X, omega Y, omega Z equals 0, 0, 0. So when you do this operation, you get three equations, three unknowns, and you can solve for the values of those. You have to pick some stuff. But I'm not going to do it, okay, because it's just too much mess. So instead, I'm going to use Python to take the determinant of, of this matrix right here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's jump back over to the computer. And you may be saying, hey, he's going to, I want to see this. He's going to do, he's going to do uh, a determinant in, in web v Python, and I'm not. <laughs> I do want to do that. I want to make that. But instead, I'm going to use this. So let me make this a little bit bigger. This is Google Colab. Google Colab is an implementation of real Python online. So you can run this on a tablet or anything. You don't have to install anything. Just go to just Google Google Colab. And it has all the stuff that we want in there. It has, uh, in particular, we want the NumPy module. Or I like to call it NumPy, but you call it what you want. So I'm going to import that. So I need to actually import stuff now. This is real Python. Import. Uh, numpy as np now i want to these are broken into cells you can you can write everything at one time but i'm going to break it into cells so i'm going to just run this one cell right here you can click the play button right there or you can press shift return it's going to run and nothing's going to happen okay so but i did import numpy so now i can use numpy and the first thing i'm going to do is to make um, put in my i matrix so I'm going to say i equals an. We don't for a matrix. We're actually going to use an array, a, a two-dimensional array. So I'm going to say np. Dot, is that big enough? Np. Dot array, parentheses, and then I'm going to list my first row. Then I'm going to list my second row, and so forth. Okay. So I'm going to say I'm going to look at my numbers right here. I have uh, 3.75 times 10 to the negative third. Oh, that's my first row. I need an extra bracket. Uh, 2.5 times 10 to the negative third. I hate that thing. Zero, comma. Now my next row is going to be equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative third. Stop. Uh, five times 10 to the negative third. Stop. Zero. And then my last row, I don't want that to show. Just stop. Just stop. Stop. There's a way to turn that off, and I can't remember what it was. Um, and I'm not going to use this too long. So then the last row is 0, 0, uh, 8.75 times 10 to the negative third. Close, print, stop it. Close, close. And let's print that because it's important to print things to make sure that it thinks it is what I think it is. And there's my, my inertia tensor, so I have that. Now it's actually pretty easy. I can uh, calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors with the eigenfunction. It's actually a function in Python. In, in Python. So all I have to do is I need to say, what am I going to call my eigenvalues? I'm going to call them lamb. You can't use lambda. And then my eigenvectors, I'm going to call w for omega. And that's just going to be np dot lin alg for linear algebra dot ei, eig. And then the, the thing I want to take the determine the eigenvalues for. And then I'm going to print, I don't really need this, lamb equals lamb. And then I'm going to print uh, w equals, oh, it's omega. And let's run that. And there you go. So now we have to interpret this in a little bit different way. Because I don't really care about those eigenvalues right there. I do care about these eigenvectors. And they're actually vertical vectors. So this is vector 1 is negative 0 0.788, 0 0.61, and so forth. And this is the next one, and then 0, 0, 1. So let's enter those in uh, as an angular velocity vector in my Python program and see if we get the same thing. So I'm going to copy this. OK, I'm going to do a little switchy ruski here. Uh, so over here, I'm just going to change the angular velocity vector. I'm going to put the first right here as that. And then I'm going to get this one as that. 
that, and that's at the zero. And let's see what happens. So you'll you only see one vector because they're both there, but both the angular velocity and the angular momentum are right on top of each other. Okay, so that is an eigenvector for this system. Now let's check the other ones. Uh, so I'm going to go back over here. Now I'm going to do this vector, which is right here. No, not there. Here. Negative. Oh, that's that one. I'm just going to copy this number. Oh, it's just the opposite. Okay. So all I need to do, all I need to do is switch those. So I'm just going to cut this, cut it, and paste it right there. Yeah. Right. Oh, that didn't work. To wait. Going back over here, so it's negative 6.154. Oh, negative. They're both negative. Okay. So I just need to make that negative. Right on top of each other. Right on top of each other. Uh, and then z, we already showed that the z direction is an eigenvector also. So that's the eigenvalue problem. Um, there are some cases that you can easily solve this equation. Um, but a lot of times you can't, and not easily. You can't factor. If you can't factor, then you're just using, you're going to have to solve a cubic equation. Nobody wants to do that. I mean, somebody wants to. I don't want to do that. And so it's okay to use Python for that. I still like my other method of, of oscillating the thing back and forth. That's kind of cool. Okay, I have one more thing to show you in another video. What I'm going to do next is model the motion of these rotating and show that if I pick these axes of rotation, these angular velocity vectors, then it does have an angular velocity and an angular momentum in the same direction. And remember, this is just for three, but nothing says you can't do this for four points or five points or 20,000 points. The same idea works.